Good afternoon. It's Saturday at EHA 2018. I'm Blake Morrison from the World Bioma Forum and I'm with Francesca Gay from the University of Torino, who stopped by to talk to us about her latest uh, data associated with the Forte trial. This is a trial that involves a combination of carfilzomib plus lenalidomide or cyclophosphamide, also including dexamethasone and uh, looking at the depth of response associated with this induction uh, regimen. So tell us about the study. Yeah, the study um, compared this induction with carfizumib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone with uh, treatment with carfizumib, cyclophosphamide, and dexamethasone. And we reported here the results uh, related to the induction phase, so four cycles uh, of induction in both uh, groups uh, of patients. We saw that uh, both regimens were highly effective because 90% uh, of patients uh, achieved uh, at least a partial response in both arms. However, the depth of response was uh, significantly higher with carfizomib plus lenalidomide and dexamethasone, with about 73% of patients achieving a VGPR versus 57% of patients achieving a VGPR with KCD. And also there was a significant improvement uh, in the rate of uh, at least near CR or CR uh, in the KRD arm compared to the KCD arm. What is of interest is also that uh, this rate of responses was uh, uh, maintained in those patients with high risk features, meaning patients with uh, high risk fish, patients with ISS stage 2-3 disease and patients with revised ISS stage 2-3 disease. So this regimen is highly active even in this subset. Was there a notable difference between the tolerability to, of the two regimens? No, well, uh, uh, there was an increase in the rate of grade 3-4 non-hematologic adverse events uh, with KRD. Uh, mainly they were uh, represented by an um, increase in uh, dermatologic adverse events, but reversible cutaneous rash or uh, they were represented by increase uh, in liver in enzymes, uh, but transient increase. So these, the toxicities were higher, but were manageable. So in the end, the, it wa they were not clinically meaningful. And I know you were testing for MRD in yes. this test study as well. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how that's shaped yes. up? Well, we performed uh, a sub-analysis on about 200 patients because the post-induction time point was not mandatory. So in these patients, we perform uh, MRD by second generation flow cytometry with a sensitivity of 10 to the minus 5. And we saw that about 50% of KRD patients were negative versus 30% of KCD. And again, this uh, uh, high rate of MRD negativity was maintained in patients with high risk features. That's great. So in terms of impact to, to patients, um, I know that uh, every region of the world can be a little different in terms of, of how standard of care is applied. So as it applies to your patients in Italy, uh, is this give you a reassurance that a, uh, a regimen that is um, uh, able to be applied to more patients with the case ID? Well, or? I, I think definitely uh, we proved that the regimen is safe because we, the toxicity was manageable uh, in this population of patients. We proved that it is effective and is effective even in the subset of high-risk patients that is an unmet medical need. We still have to wait the long-term results to have also the data on survival to see if there is also an impact on survival. I think the access to the drugs up front is not easy, as we all know, but this is a promising regimen that we hope could be available in the future. Well, we look forward to hearing more about it at the next uh, major conference. We'll see you at Ash so, so. in December. Thank That's you. So, so.